I'm uh, Brian Karras. I'm a senior graphics programmer at Epic Games. Um, I work on the engine team and a variety of different rendering related problems to solve. Game Engine covers a, a large piece of technology that um, many different aspects. Uh, there's a, you can bring in art assets um, from other packages, bring them into the engine, build out a world with a number of these different assets. Um, but instead of just being a renderer, a game engine also has uh, many other components to make that, that world come alive. There's physics simulations, there's sound systems, um, there is gameplay code which you can program in your own your logic into that so that you can have um, AI be able to navigate that space and, uh, and do things within the world. Um, the aspect that I work on is, is uh, displaying those images to the screen and trying to make those look as, as beautiful or as realistic as we can. Performance is king. We try to be optimal in, in all different aspects that we do because if anything can, can slow it down, it's always, you know, the, the weakest link is the, the one that you, you try to uh, you try to find and, and optimize away. Um, the things that contribute most to performance problems typically are uh, either mistakes where something is just done in a way and it's, uh, it's uh, doing way more things than were, was intended. Those are the ones that are kind of easy to clean up. You just make sure that you profile and uh, see what things are happening there and find the mistakes. But the ones that aren't that simple um, come down to most of the time just counts of things. You've got too many triangles, you've got too many objects in the scene, you've got too many light sources, too many uh, shadow casters. Um, those, those, all of those types of things contribute, they all add up. Um, so you want to make sure that your budgets, um, all of your, um, your different st stats for the frame are within budget to make sure that you're hitting in total your final frame time budget. There's a number of uh, uh, games and real-time uh, demos that have they've done some pretty fantastic stuff over the last few years. Um, a few that come to mind is there's uh, some, some work from Activision Research, um, so, um, Rise, the game from Crytek, uh, Ready at Dawn's game, The, the Order. There, there's a number of, of um, kind of cutting-edge virtual human work. Um, in that space, we were a little bit behind with Unreal Engine, where we had focused a lot on environments and a number of different problems that we needed to solve, but we kind of held off on humans for a bit until this last year, where we tried to really hit it hard. Um, in that way, we, we went at it from all different aspects, from the lighting and shading side of things, from the material representations, from the animation, facial animation specifically, different things that are really important about the face which is just something that humans key on really, um, really closely. Um, the, the skin, the eyes, hair, things like that. Just a personal opinion of mine, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the concept of the uncanny valley. Uh, I think there's a lot that can just kind of be pushed more towards the realism direction and that a lot of those, um, it's still valuable to make, to make progress towards that. I, I don't feel personally like um, you end up reducing the quality or the believability of a character by increasing small aspects of the realism before you get to this threshold where now it's all of a sudden acceptable to do. Um, there's definitely tons of things about characters that um, can pull away from the believability. So on this, uh, this Hellblade Senua demo that we did, um, it was fortunate that the design decision to put face paint on um, was an aspect of the character's concept design that wasn't a, uh, a technical choice, um, but it turned out to be somewhat fortunate for us because it, allowed, it gave us more liberties because some of the, the aspects of her face that would be more noticeable um, as not being photorealistic were hidden by face paint. So there's definitely cases where you can try to take more liberties if you steer clear from, uh, um, from the photorealistic um, expectations in some areas, but I think all of the improvements that can be made as far as increasing the, the realism are, are good things to be striving for. Absolutely. Um, so we've, I think our character team was a lot more comfortable from the creature 
artist's end of things. Uh, we have just some fantastic sculptors uh, at Epic Games, and our ability to create creatures is a kind of a, a strength of the studio. Um, and we've, we've treated humans in a similar way in the past. They went through the same sort of pipeline. Um, we would get the, the um, high poly model would be sculpted in, in ZBrush and, and textured up in the same way that a creature would be done. Um, and the same level of care to different aspects of the, the, um, the human's design would be, um, how do I say that? Uh, there wasn't an extreme focus on particular parts of the face for, for characters, um, for, for human characters um, that we've been doing recently, but with this, this latest batch of virtual human work that we've done, we found that we needed to rely a lot more on scanning process to gather very specific photo reference um, and scan data off of the face. We need to have um, a lot more careful control over the animation of the facial details, things that didn't, were not nearly as important for our characters or for our uh, creatures. Um, it's kind of the, the paths on creating characters have deviated between whether it's a human to whether it's a creature, where we're, we're sculpting our creatures, but we're scanning our humans. People are just really good at uh, noticing details about other humans. It's where we've been trained, uh, we've, we've evolved to do that. Our brains are designed to be able to notice the smallest of details in facial expressions. We can. We can detect what people are feeling and very small little changes in, uh, in their facial expression. Um, because we're so programmed to see those details, it means when we're trying to replicate them in a, in a, a, a virtual human that we pick up on those same details being off. Um, whether that is directly related to an emotion that we understand or uh, whether that's just um, we detect it as an error um, those things will come through much more um, compared to a, a creature. We don't notice those errors in, as much. Um, so we, we found not just to, to that previous question, which was how is our, our uh, um, character pipeline kind of changed. We have taken, uh, in some cases where we've tried to have uh, like beautification layers on top of the scan data that we've gotten from um, these scans of humans, uh, in some cases, even small amounts of, of changes that we've made to that scan data has brought it away from photorealism, and, um, and we've had to dial that back. Um, just these very small changes, you'd think, to data that was coming from a real, real-life source, and even that, just those small changes were enough to, to uh, take, the, take your mind out of it, to break the realism. It depends a lot on what the production is. Um, so our, our latest effort with this, uh, this Senawa Hellblade demo, we were trying to um, figure out photorealism for characters or to get as far as we could achieve in the time frame that we had um, as an exercise of just seeing how, how far we can push the technology. Um, but on, on Paragon, um, the characters there are a little bit more stylized. Um, definitely on some of our other projects, they'll be even more in the stylistic direction. So it depends a lot on what, what the art direction for that project is. There's a lot of overlap, I, I believe. I, I haven't worked in the film side of things, but uh, a lot of, of what we've done in that space for real time is taking um, different bits and pieces from the uh, research work that's done for films and tried to apply them where possible in the real time space. Um, Behind it all, there's the same sort of physics that's happened when light hits a surface. Um, the same sort of geometry is, is underlying there, the same sort of way in which the, the skin of the face is, is deforming. So we're trying to hit the same sort of goals and being able to understand what's happening underneath it all um, to try to simulate that. Uh, the more that we understand about the problem, the better. So there's a lot of similar research that that we've been able to draw upon. There's a, a good amount of time pressure. It's, I think it's a bit different in the film world. Um, 
we're not, we don't have the pressure to try to compete or to bid less than other competitors on, on things like that because that's just not how our business works. Um, but there's definitely time pressure in, um, so this, this last tech demo that we did for Hellblade, the entire project was, I think, seven weeks from start to finish. Um, there's a good chunk of, of character rendering technology that was done before that, um, but a good amount of those improvements, so uh, about half of that, the work on eye rendering, for example, was done in about two weeks' time. Uh, so there's a great deal of time pressure to just get it as good as we can for us to be able to show this off at, at the show. Um, but on the other hand, the, the work that was done on hair rendering, um, I had a lot more time on that than I have on most things um, at Epic. I had, had probably three to four months to work on that research, but that was kind of known ahead of time where it was something like, we knew this was a very hard problem. Um, we knew that there was uh, a place that we could innovate that was different than what other people were doing in the industry at the time. So it was worth like, well, let's try to do this right. Let's block out the time so that I can have time to do the research and implement something that, that would that would be uh, uh, pushing the boundaries on things. In, in kind of ge general terms, one of the biggest challenges that Epic has, um, or definitely the engine team within Epic has, is uh, many different competing interests. We've got our, our task list of things that we want to do, that we've got requests from the outside to do, is just so gigantic <laughs> um, that getting to all of those things is, is very difficult. Um, we're, we're trying to get into more industries than just game development. Um, us being at FMX is kind of an example of that. We're, we're looking to get into um, um, having some tendrils into the film industry. Um, we're getting into architectural visualization. Um, we, sh we showed off a, a demo at GDC this year showing a car configurator from McLaren. We've got a number of different industries that we're looking at to, to get into and all those things pull us in different directions. So having, uh, getting to play in all those different arenas is really fun because we're not just stuck on one track. We get to try a, a bunch of different types of things, but getting pulled in all those directions is a big challenge. Um, as far as uh, specific to just rendering and being competitive, it's, it's always a challenge. There's, there's a ton of great work happening throughout the, the game industry or just real-time rendering in general. And uh, keeping up on that, trying to stay competitive within... Uh, within that industry is always going to be a challenge. Um, I'd say there's there's two sides to that. One of which is um, I I really like um, discussing the work that I do and giving back to the community. Um, there's so much of what I do that draws upon other people's research, and I, I like sharing the stuff that we do and contributing to that that uh, wider community. Um, so that's kind of like a, a personal side of it. Um, from the, the professional side, I think there's, there's a lot of overlap between film and games, um, ever more so. We're kind of uh, more and more overlap as techniques are kind of merging between the two industries. So the more that I can learn about um, kind of the other side of the pond <laughs> um, of uh, the film industry, the more that I can kind of um, carry over and possibly make use of.